Avengers Endgame was a visual feast for the eyes. It almost overloaded our minds and made our heads explode with all of its jaw-dropping, gasp-inducing, head-spinning moments. But all of your favorite OMG moments wouldn't have been possible without the use of CGI. It's incredible to think that such an amazing movie was mostly shot in front of green screens with actors wearing motion capture suits. Today we'll be sharing some behind the scenes pictures and footage so you can see the different side by side of some of your favorite endgame scenes. So let's get into it right now. It was the scene that caused probably the loudest cheers out of any of them besides Hulk handing Ant-Man a taco. We're of course talking about the now iconic scene of Captain America wielding Mjolnir. Everything about the moment is truly epic. Iron Man is hurt. Thanos has Thor on the ropes, trying to drive Stormbreaker into Thor's chest. Which admittedly will now be harder since it has a much spongier barrier around it. All seems lost for our heroes until Mjolnir starts to rise. Suddenly Thanos is hit from behind by the hammer and it comes flying back to someone worthy, Captain Frickin' America! We're so happy for CGI because this scene would be 1000% less impactful without it. Captain America wielding Mjolnir in front of the desolate remains of the Avengers facility? Amazing! Captain America wielding Mjolnir in front of a green screen? A little underwhelming. It starts to break the whole illusion of the scene and it reminds us that we're watching actors perform with props. We like to zoom in too on the final shot. It makes us feel closer to Cap and more connected with him. But serious question, was he always worthy and was just lying about lifting it in Age of Ultron? Or was this a new development? We're going to say something that's probably going to come as a shock to many of you. Even though Avengers Endgame had a crazy budget, a lot of it was not shot on location. We mean that as far as we know, the cast and crew didn't travel to the farthest reaches of space to film its cosmic scenes. We know, we know, that's a huge surprise to a lot of people, but trust us, all the scenes from this film were shot on Earth. Amazing. Which means Clint and Natasha's journey to Vormir wasn't filmed on some alien planet, but rather in the studio itself. And looking at the behind the scenes pictures of this scene, it's a huge testament to the actors that they were able to convey such heavy emotions because they were really just standing around a bunch of green screens. And the behind the scenes picture does confirm one of our biggest questions about Endgame, and that's whether Hawkeye's mohawk stood up naturally like that or it was just another product of CGI. The pictures do suggest that yes, his hair really did get that poofy, which is perhaps the most surprising thing about this scene. You know, besides the whole Black Widow death thing. Will there ever be a more iconic scene in the MCU than this Avengers Assemble scene? We've been waiting for someone to say it for like 10 years now. It gives us chills just thinking about all the Avengers lined up ready to fight Thanos' army and Cap giving the go ahead with those two epic words. But from what should come as no surprise, there was a lot of CGI involved here. Yep, sorry to disappoint you, but Wong and Doctor Strange did not end up summoning heroes from across the galaxy, but rather, they were there the whole time. But looking at the behind the scenes pictures is where things get interesting, as even though people were standing in certain places, they seemed to be moved around for the final product using the magic of CGI. Probably the biggest difference in this particular shot is that Sean Gunn's Kraglin seemed to have been replaced. In the green screen picture, he's standing behind Evangeline Lilly's wasp, ready to do battle with his new mohawk arrow. But when you watch that scene in the film, it's Groot who's standing behind Wasp ready to fight. It's a tiny change, but goes to show how much thought was put into who is standing where in the film's best scene. On one hand, there are scenes in Avengers Endgame that are clearly CGI. Maybe a character looks inserted into a place where they don't belong, or a background looks a little too cheesy, but those moments are forgivable, given that all the movie has going for it. But then there are some moments that you wouldn't believe are CGI and might take you by surprise. Case in point, the epic slow motion walk where the Avengers get ready for their time heist in an epic moment. But most are surprised to find out that the team's time travel white suits are 100% digital. In reality, the Avengers are just wearing their normal costumes or armor, but you never know that thanks to the magic of CGI. If you're wondering why the heck they would do something like this, because you would think costumes are cheaper than CGIing entire costumes, it all comes down to timing. In an interview explaining the decision, a visual effects supervisor explained that because the movies were filmed back to back, they didn't have a decision yet on what exactly the suits would look like. So they decided to make them CGI so they could decide later. And honestly, they're actually pretty cool. You have to wonder what it was like on set on the day of the epic Avengers Assemble scene. You have more Marvel actors than you've ever seen in a scene together lining up and having to put on their most convincing come at us bro face. On screen it looks amazing with all their powers and costumes on full display, but how does that look when there's nothing around? 
Actors deserve more recognition for being able to sell these scenes as convincingly as they do, because if it were us, we might laugh at the thought of standing next to Tom Holland in his super fancy CGI motion director rig, doing Spider-Man poses, or Benedict Cumberbatch spinning his hands in circles with a deadly serious look on his face. What's super interesting about this scene is if you look closely, it looks like Iron Man replaced Thor in the final shot. In the background of the real shot, we see a pre-CGI Mark Ruffalo standing next to Thor, but in the final product, it's Hulk and Iron Man standing next to each other. Even though they all look super serious, this layout makes us think it was probably the most fun out of any day for the Avengers cast and crew. See, the big three definitely know how to have fun. Before Thanos summoned his massive army and all the Avengers assembled, we got to see an epic fight between the Mad Titan and the original three heroes of the MCU. Okay, we know that technically Hulk was the second character to get an MCU solo film, so he deserves more recognition, but Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man are definitely the pillars of the MCU and the old Avengers team, so it made sense that these three would face Thanos together. But even though they were facing probably the biggest threat in the history of their existence, among the ruins of their Avengers facility, it doesn't mean that they couldn't have fun with each other. Just look at this behind-the-scenes photo of the three of them standing next to each other. Chunky Thor looks like he's either playing air guitar or reciting a Shakespearean monologue. While Captain America is throwing up a rock and roll sign with his hand, Iron Man looks like he's having a blast as well, but we're pretty sure he looks like that all the time. It's a fun picture of the group before things get deadly serious. It was a moment that was a long time coming. Faced against insurmountable odds, a frightened Spider-Man hands off the Infinity Gauntlet to Captain Marvel. He's unsure how he's gonna make it through Thanos' army, but suddenly she's not alone. All the female heroes join voices for an epic attack to clear a path for Captain Marvel. It's such a cool moment that you're willing to forgive the fact that Captain Marvel could have either A, plowed through the army no problem by herself, or B, flown into the sky with the Infinity Gauntlet so it was out of Thanos' reach. But whatever. It was great to see all these characters kick major butt. And the behind-the-scenes photo makes it look like it was one big foot race. We see all the actresses running to do battle on set, which begs the question, who do you think was the fastest? Our money's on Zoe Saldana, just because her costume seems like one of the lightest to move around in, but who knows? Maybe all that paint might slow her down. Even though the behind-the-scenes reveals all the fake scenery, one thing that looked 100% real is the ferociousness of each fighter's face. We almost feel sorry for Thanos' army. Good luck, pal! You know, we sort of wish Thanos' ship actually was just one giant green screen because of now, the finished product looks a little dark and ominous. We mean, we get he's the Mad Titan and everything and that his quest to find all the Infinity Stones to wipe out half of all life in the universe leaves little time for thinking about interior decorating. But seriously, Thanos, have you ever thought about a houseplant? Or, uh, you know, a nice throw rug? It would really liven up the place in our eyes. Maybe then your daughters wouldn't hate you so much. <laughs> no, they'd still hate you because you're a horrible father, but at least consider the houseplant idea, okay? But what's cool about this CGI scene is how Thanos' ship had to be completely designed. Just like in the other outdoor scenes, all digital artists had to do was CGI in some sky and maybe some floating spaceships. But for Thanos' ship, they had to design a complete interior that was both a little stylish but also fit with what we knew about Thanos. And from the looks of it, Thanos loves for his ship walls to look like prison bars, which does fit with his cold purple heart. We've mentioned it before, but it must be really hard for those Avengers with magical powers to keep a straight face while shooting their fight scenes. Doctor Strange always looks like he was just been told that he wasn't a good enough surgeon whenever he cast spells. But then you imagine Benedict Cumberbatch grunting while spinning his hands in circles, and you can't help but smile a little bit. Same goes for the Avengers' other big hand magic user with Scarlet Witch. Her powers involve a lot of hand-waving, and we're lucky that Elizabeth Olsen seems so down to commit to the part. But imagine the big screen Scarlet Witch vs. Thanos scene in Endgame. In the movie, it's a truly awesome moment where a furious Scarlet Witch almost beats Thanos single-handedly before Thanos panics and calls an airstrike on their location. But look at the behind-the-scenes pictures where a less red Scarlet Witch would be yelling at the d thanos to Josh Brolin decked out in a wonky motion detector suit. If we could somehow see that complete scene without CGI, that would make us happier than Thanos playing with a perfectly balanced set of pendulum balls. Because who wouldn't want to see that, right? When you're just a kid from Queens who suddenly was transported to another planet to fight the strongest being in the galaxy, only to lose and then get dusted, only to immediately come back and start fighting in a huge epic war for all mankind, yeah, you're gonna want a break at some point. After going through so much before the final battle, Peter Parker found himself running away with the most powerful weapon in the entire universe. But after some time, he had to hand it off to someone who could definitely get it across the finish line. And who should appear to help him out? None other than Captain Marvel and the rest of the MCU's mightiest female warriors. 
In the film, Captain Marvel almost looks angelic, bathed in bright light, and appearing before Peter in his time of need. But the behind-the-scenes pictures reveal a much more ordinary scene where Peter gives her the gauntlet. Talk about some movie magic. This scene made us wish that Captain Marvel could appear in our lives and offer to take our problems away, but we know, we know, that would never happen. Unless we found ourselves in an intergalactic battle to save the universe, hmm. Hulk traveled to the Sanctum Sanctorum in Endgame on the day of the Battle of New York to get the Time Stone, but found that the Ancient One was busy attacking Jatari and unwilling to just hand over the Time Stone to a big green monster, which is definitely understandable on her part. The Time Stone is kind of an important thing, so she's not just gonna give it away willy-nilly. Hulk didn't even ask nicely, he just showed up and tried to grab it. But Hulk should have watched Doctor Strange first because then he would have known that the Ancient One isn't one to just sit by and let bad things happen. But it's the behind the scenes pictures shown here that's actually quite fascinating. For one, all of New York is CGI, which probably makes sense since Endgame wasn't shot there. But also what's interesting is that the Ancient One's robe is black while in the movie it's yellow. More CGI trickery it seems. But the really fun thing is how Mark Ruffalo appears to be on stilts while wearing his motion capture suit, which presumably makes it easier for other actors to maintain eye contact with the Hulk. But come on, that must be hard to act wearing that kind of suit while on stilts. As cool as it seems to watch Captain Marvel glide through the air as she zips across the battlefield in the final battle of the movie, ripping through Thanos' army like they were paper people, the actual way to film these type of scenes is a little funny looking. When we watch the movie, Captain Marvel glows white hot and she uses her powers to soar around and it's quite an awe-inducing thing to witness. Compare that to the crewmen in the studio who hold up Brie Larson with a series of wires while a gigantic fan blows on her in real life. It's sort of a different experience. But it's pictures like these that really emphasizes just how hard it is to bring superheroes to life on the big screen. Looking at how uncomfortable all those wires seems to be as she tries to act serious and heroic, we sort of think Brie Larson would prefer if she was instead actually blasted with cosmic energy in an attempt to actually give her real-life superpowers, instead of subject herself to more green screen flying. Anything might be better than what she currently seems to be going through in order to make Captain Marvel convincing on the big screen. The directors of Avengers Endgame actually wanted to get a real Pegasus for Valkyrie to ride on during the final battle, but they were shocked to find out that the mythical flying horse did not exist in real life, and thus they had to improvise and make the Pegasus entirely CGI. We know, we know, we would much prefer the real thing too, but the science to create a flying horse just isn't ready yet. Maybe one day. But because there is so much going on in that final battle, you might not question what they actually did for the Pegasus, but thanks to this behind the scenes picture, we now know the answer. The model for the Pegasus looks like a version of a high-tech go-kart that rocks back and forth while also being carried by crew members in full-on green suits. Now let's be honest, what's scarier to encounter late at night in a dark alley? A horse with wings or a weird saddle thing carried by a bunch of men in green suits? Honestly, the green-suited men sound much more terrifying, but Valkyrie still looks fierce no matter what she's riding so her enemies need to watch out. In the huge hullabaloo of the final battle, there were a lot of characters who had big jaw-dropping moments while others didn't have that much to do. If you think about it, the Guardians of the Galaxy didn't have a huge presence in the final battle besides Gamora's meeting with Star-Lord, but there was at least a few fun instances sprinkled here and there. The most memorable of which is probably seeing Drax leap onto an alien's back and start doing his stabby stabby thing he loves to do so much while the lovable Korg takes him out from the front. By the way, this moment was actually shot looks like a lot of fun, with the alien actually being one gigantic punching bag that Dave Batista had to leap onto and stab with his weapons. Good thing Dave Batista has a history with wrestling because this seems like a difficult maneuver to pull off. We only wish we had more moments like this throughout the final battle, but we understand there just wasn't a lot of time to focus on everyone. And then again, if we were starring in this movie and had a chance to jump on a giant punching bag and stab it a whole bunch of times, y yeah, we wouldn't say no either. We can all see the scene in our heads. A beaten and bloody Tony Stark stares down Thanos after stealing away the Infinity Stones and inserting them in his own handmade Infinity Gauntlet. Thanos screams how he's inevitable, while Tony Stark delivers the most perfect line to end his journey in the MCU. We'd say it, but come on, you know what he says here. It's a crazy visual too, with the power of the Infinity Stones coursing through his suit and body and the mass destruction all around him. But take a look at the scene without all the CGI and you'll be surprised at how bare everything is. It's ultimately just Robert Downey Jr. in front of some green screens with his arms and hands exposed while wearing only half a suit. It's insane to look at this scene with just its bare bones because it's a moment that will forever be seared into our brains. Really, the CGI isn't the most important thing in this scene as it's RDJ's delivery that really cements it as iconic. Goodbye, Tony Stark and RDJ. We're gonna miss you 3,000. But we wonder if you're gonna miss all these crazy CGI scenes or not.
Even without the CGI, it's hard to beat the scene where all the Avengers assemble together for the first time. Even if they're all standing in front of green screens, it still gives us major goosebumps. What about you? What was your favorite Endgame scene before CGI? Were there any that we missed? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe button for more MCU content. As always, thanks for watching.